here we are at the bench. Um, so today we're going to hydro dip. Some of the guys were asking how I did it. So uh, today we're going to be hydro dipping my uh, Armaton uh, rooster. But uh, here's just an example I did in blue. Um, you guys can see it. Turned out pretty sharp. So this was a test sample. So one of the things I wanted to make sure when I did this is that all the screws, I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Oh, too high. So all the screws also have the hydro dipping on the screws too. So one of the steps I'm taking, uh, so here we are with the rooster. Um, so everybody was asking me, oh, would you, how'd you sand it down, blah, 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 where to go, here it is. So I just take a wet piece of sandpaper on a piece of glass, light, nice flat surface, and I take the part I shall be wet sanding, and then I go ahead, wet the paper, and just lightly scuff it up, sand it up, so on and so forth. The parts are already been cleaned, so I am not going to try to screw those up anymore. Uh, but one of the things I'm doing, so I use this guy right here. What do we got? We got cover, there's the paint, or there's the clear coat. And here's what I use to um, bind or help bind the hydro dip coatings to the actual carbon fiber. So we're all sanded down. I wet sanded it. Um, that got rid of any high spots also around the screw holes um, by doing that on the wet piece of paper. Actually, it helped it seat a little bit better. So one of the steps I'm doing right now in order to help me clear it or correction clear it or get the hydro dip and the white, I have to obviously paint the carbon fiber. So one of the things we're gonna do is paint the carbon fiber with a bonding uh, universal primer. Uh, and then we're going to uh, sand it down. So that's what I'm doing right now. What I'll do is I'll just quickly assemble this thing real quick using the screws that are for the Armaton. Uh, that way when I do prime it, paint it, everything, Yes, so what you're going to have uh, when you're done is underneath uh, the actual arms you're going to have, obviously it's not going to be um, coated, but one of the reasons I'm doing it this way is so all of the flames, the green flames that are going to be on this particular uh, uh, rooster, um, they all blend together. There's not like flames going this way, flames going that way, everything's smooth and it all looks like it was painted obviously like that on there. So, so we're gonna go ahead and assemble this real quick. We'll get back to you in a second. I'll speed through it. All right, so uh, I was interrupted there by a phone call, but uh, all good. So that's basically what I got right now. Um, the reason I'm putting the standoffs on um, instead of assembling it correctly is because these plates right here um, are, what's the word I'm looking for? they're right up against the arms. So in order for me to correctly um, paint everything evenly, that way I'll be able to spray underneath and the bottom sides of each one of the components. Um, downside is I'll get paint on the bottom side of the arm, but I'll be able to take that off later. But So that's what I'm gonna do real quick. Okay, so we changed the idea a little bit. Um, I'm actually not gonna, I'm just gonna paint it like this. Uh, I took egg core nuts, threw those on there, uh, I'll paint it white, this surface white first. I'll paint this one and then all the smaller little parts. And then I'll take this all apart, scuff sand it again with the 600 grit sandpaper. So just so it's got a nice white, smooth uh, uh, machine you know, surface uh, for the paint to adhere to. And then we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and dip it. I'll be back. All right, so here we are, just real quick. Uh, before I go ahead and paint this, uh, I have been touching touching it pretty good with my hands. So I'm just gonna take some regular uh, rubbing alcohol and wipe down any oils that I might've got on the parts, uh, just to ensure that uh, everything sticks really well. That's one of the things I'm concerned about, especially the screws. I want the paint to stick to the screws really well. They've already been sanded down. So, good hang-up tool, okay? Get yourself, I don't know if you guys can see that. 
just get you some solder and just wrap it through there. I got some pretty thin solder, but uh, that way I can hold it without getting my hands all screwed up. And then uh, also get some rubber gloves, which I have over here that I'll use. But uh, all right, we'll be back. All right, so here we are <coughs> outside. Before I do anything, let me go ahead and put these uh, gloves on. I normally would wash these latex gloves off just because they do come with that powder on them and that could get on the surface and make it kind of you know, nasty. But we're shaking our can real good. See that? We're doing one or two things. We're screwing up a beautiful rooster. Which JJ would say, oh, you're, you're screwed up anyway. But uh, we're going to do some light coats. I really want to focus on the edges first. So we'll get the edges real good. Now we'll focus on the interior edges. It's a beautiful 85 degree day here in Texas or so. But you're gonna make make sure you get some good primer all over everything. Not too thick. Get a good coat on there. Doesn't have to be crazy. But you can do one or two coats. I'll probably do two coats just to. And it's okay if it's got a rough finish because remember, we're going to uh, wet sand this down. So don't be afraid to put too much primer on it. You can always take primer off of it. But, but this helps smooth out the edges. So there you go. I don't know if you guys can see that. So what I'll do, good old wife. Uh, let's see. What I'll do is I'll hang this guy up here real quick. Let her dry. And then I'll do the smaller parts. Here are the smaller parts. They've been cleaned, prepped. One thing I do say, I don't know if you guys can see that, but the delamination when you do put the screws in, I don't think that's going to be too catastrophic to the actual build, but just letting you know, it does and can happen. So there we go, set those down. And this honestly should be dry to the touch. Doesn't matter because I got this. And for the top deck, I actually set that down on the flat surface. And for the top deck, we'll just go ahead and run that through there. That's how we'll hold it. We want everything to be white because this is our base coat. So this is what uh, is going to shine through the actual uh, going to shine through the yeah, I'm starting to stick to it. Don't forget the bottom side. That is starting to dry already. Hang that up. Hit this up with another coat. Make sure it's coated real good. Looks good. Uh, you can never ever have too much adhesion. I don't know if that's the right answer. Especially 
you get it on too thick, it'll start peeling off. But this will help take out some of those lines that are in the uh, carbon fiber, the lamination lines. So it should uh, turn out pretty good. So you guys can see that really good. Nice and gloss, or nice and uh, it's got a dull flat finish to it. Nice and even. Looks good. All right, be back. All right, so here we are back at the bench. Uh, as you can see, uh, this has been setting up for a few hours. Um, so what I'm gonna do is uh, disassemble it. Um, I could actually probably just hydro dip it right now. But one of the things I wanna make sure we do is I want a smooth glass finish. So I'm gonna go ahead and, well, should I? What should I do? Um, it looks really good um, so far. Maybe we'll just go ahead and dip it. What do you think, guys? Ah, there's still some bubbles. All right, so we'll we'll go ahead and disassemble this, and uh, I'll sand it down. If I gotta touch it up at all, I'll go ahead and touch it up. But right, be back in a sec. So here we are, everything's disassembled. Everything looks really good. I'm just going to lightly, with the wet sandpaper, actually let me, rather use this old piece, clear the bench, move the parts real quick. This is how I'm doing it. You know, everybody, you guys can get on here and comment. You know, everybody's probably got their own way of doing it. You know, who knows which way is the right way, who knows which way is the wrong way. I'm probably doing it the wrong way, but I know it works, so I've done it. So I'm gonna go get a washcloth right there, a wet, damp washcloth, and I'm gonna pull a piece of this old paper off. And any spots that I see, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and lightly. Uh, you could use a use a, a glass surface. It usually works the best. And you just lightly, lightly, lightly just take the rough spots down, and you'll see the water start to clear up or whiten up a little bit. And uh, yeah, that's a lot smoother. So you hit any of those rough spots, get the edges real good. That'll fill in the uh, where you had. Uh, you know the lamination lines that you see on the side but oh you guys can see that it's really smooth and you'll see it start shining up a little bit um, that's all right if you pull you know some of the paint comes off um, that's all right because you're gonna you're gonna what you call it you're, you're, you're dipping it so it's it's gonna hide some of that stuff too but the thing is, get it smooth. You know you got a good surface to bow to. And then when you're done, you just wipe it all off. Yeah. I don't know if you guys can see it, but nice, smooth, shiny. And I'll go ahead and do this to each one of the parts. Make sure they're clean. You don't want any lint. I'm using a paper towel, but yeah. You got a lint rag, but you're just checking them for imperfections or uneven spots. And that one looks good, so that one will be ready for dipping. This one looks pretty goddamn good. I might not even have to touch this one. But I'll go ahead and scuff it up just so they look look the same. But uh, that's the process that I use. Kind of like an automotive process in a way. A lot of guys, uh, to get rid of the orange peel look in a paint, they'll go ahead and they'll they'll just knock down the paint they may even you know they'll put a couple layers of primer on it I'm not a big automotive guy but I've seen it done a few times it's not that hard a lot of a lot of work goes into those paint you know the custom paint jobs and the, the professional paint jobs but once I've done I'll take these and I'll I'll wash them all off but see so I started wearing through if you sand too much you'll wear through that's all right because end state is. I mean, it'll probably be covered with a yeah, a flame or something. But if not, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Looks real good. So 
one of the reasons I did it this way is because I didn't want to mess with the tolerances between the carbon fiber. Yeah, the designer had it designed for a reason that way. And I didn't want to add, you know, a few thousands of paint, you know, a few thousands of an inch of paint between there. Um, so that's, that's one of the other reasons I did it this way. I should be wearing my gloves, but my hands are clean already. But uh, basically take the white back down to where it's not shiny anymore. It's a, uh, it's more of a, a dull finish. And then you know you've completed your job. But you don't want to wear it to the point where you're going through back into the carbon fiber. So you can actually wear the primer down to that point. But a lot of work. Yeah, but uh, I think the end state is going to be a really, really beautiful quad. JJ Roto Geek and those guys, they, they, um, they do. We, we love taking pride in our drones. Or in our quads, I'm sorry. And uh, we love custom building them like that. Because they look absolutely stunning. You know, even though it's something you're, you're going to take out and you're going to crash it in the ground. But uh, at least it looked cool doing it. You know. And we got nothing better to do. We're all married old men. You know. but I don't know if you guys can see that, but the, the sheen is gone. And it's just a light coat. So I'll do that to all these pieces. And... Uh, and we'll go down and hydro dip it. And this is the first time I've done hydro dipping. And uh, I did a test piece. Learned a lot from that little test piece. You know, uh, one of the things I didn't use enough hydro you know, film, but it was only a test piece, so I wouldn't worry about it. And uh, you do go in at a 45 degree angle-ish, but one of the things is you don't stay in the middle, you move it around uh, for the best coverage and the nicest coverage. So we're getting this down. Yeah, smooth, baby. That's gonna look nice, man. I know you guys didn't wanna watch me sand for an hour, but I'll probably fast forward through most of this. You'll know when you get to the right spot. But if you want, you can fast forward through this. I'm just going to keep it recording. Um, I have one more, one more arm left. And then we'll rinse all this stuff off. So here's the last arm. Where did I put the little piece? So we'll knock down any runs that I might have gotten in the paint by doing it this way also. And it just thins out the paint a little bit too. So you're not carrying around you know, that much weight. But again, right there on the edges, but the edges probably get screwed up anyway. But, uh, so this is gonna be uh, Project Fire Rooster. See how it really went through the edge right there? It's all right. We'll see what happens. Uh, Project Flaming Chicken. We'll see. <laughs> Gotta give it a cool name. That's probably it. All right, guys, we'll be back in a second. Yeah, this quad is going to be my baby. So I'm going to take it out and beat the shit out of it. I got all those guys up there. I don't know if you can see those. I don't really care about those like this thing. This is probably the nicest quad I've ever built. Um, so there's all our parts. I forgot this, so I'll have to hit that up later. But that's just for the GoPro mount. I'm not too concerned about it. But here's our rooster frame i'm kind of curious how this would take the uh paint the hydro dip but we'll see um definitely probably going to do a jj and uh, pull that fox here apart and screw it up but uh all right so we're gonna go ahead and put this back together the way it came apart but as you can see you know the lines will line up yeah and we're, we haven't changed any tolerances so i'm happy about that We'll be back in a second. I'll put it back together. All right, so here we are. I'm ready to hydro dip. I made this cool little tool. I call it the uh, M3 Hydro Dipping Quad Tool. But that should help hold the quad 
Yeah, roughly still. Let me screw it in all the way. There we go. That should help hold it still as I dip it. So I'm going to dip it. We're going to go in at a 45 degree angle. Um, ish. So like this. And I'm going to do it upside down. Because I really don't care about the bottom, but I want the top to look amazing. So what we're going to do... Um, so here's our flame film. This is going to look wicked. I'm just hoping it doesn't turn out too dark. But I'm going for that nice fluorescent green look on the quad. So here's our film. What I'm going to do, all we do here is I'm going to go with that. That looks about right. Um, I think I need a bigger bucket. But we'll figure it out when we get down there. But that's what I'm going with. And then I'll have enough left over for the rest of the parts. So we should be good. Alright, I'm going to cut this real quick with a... Where the hell did I put it? Now my bench is a mess. Dude, when I get mess, I get work in here, dude, I start fucking throwing shit. I don't know. I'll find my razor blade. You're going to cut it the size you need. We'll be back. Alright, guys. So here we are. We're out outside beautiful day here in texas again and i am just cleaning out a bucket real quick so what we're gonna do is just tap water yeah everybody's like oh it needs to be 80 degrees blah blah, blah. i'm like you'll know when the film has stretched right so here we are in the garage i'm gonna set that down the bucket's cleaned out some tap water and we're gonna fill up the bucket be back in a second all right guys so here we are back out in the garage um one of the things you do wet your fingers um and test to see which side's sticky okay so what you're gonna do is you're gonna lay this in here hopefully this is a large enough pail and you're gonna just set it in here like so and you're gonna look for air bubbles so we're gonna look right here for air bubbles which i don't see any air bubbles but you'll see it see it starting to expand it's real funny looking see how it's wrinkly it'll get wrinkly and then it'll start to square away there it goes so that's just it absorbing the water right now at this point so once you see it get smooth You know you're ready to go. And there it goes. It's absorbing the water. Now you want to make sure you got a border around this stuff. Okay. Um, luckily this piece here was big enough to... Uh, my dickhead buddy's here. Uh, lucky this piece was big enough to... Uh, I didn't have to get a separate border. Uh, or tape in a border. But if you do need a border... <laughs> Just go ahead and tape it out with some tape. So that's what you're waiting for. I don't know if you guys can see it, but see how the wrinkles are going away? So hot water, cold water, I don't really see a difference. One just takes longer than the other. Warm water is obviously gonna tense up a little bit faster, but see now it's, it's crystal clear. Or it's uh, smooth as fuck. All right, so right here, I mean, you guys can see it, but there's an air bubble. And since it's on the edge, I'm not too worried about it. But you just work the air bubbles out. You can touch this shit. Um, yeah, so we're gonna try. I got a little bit of air over there. All right, so now we're gonna get the activator. Where did I put the activator? Oh, it's a note to sell. Make sure you got all the shit there. Do this when you're ready to go. So this has been shaken up. I just used it a little while ago. So here we are with the quad. Be scared of the activator. Uh, I'm gonna make sure we 
We got good contact, good hold on the quad. I'll take test spray and we're gonna go ahead and activate it. So there we got the activator and then we're just gonna go real slow. All right, be back in a sec. All right, so there we are. Um, yeah, we didn't get it coated coated like I wanted to, but I don't know, this will do it. Well, see, we can't save some of this stuff. Get it coated. See what happens. I don't know if that's gonna work or not, but looks good so far. We just it missed a few spots, but I don't know if I can recover that. I don't know why. Maybe I did it wrong, wrong angle or something. Oh yeah, you'll get it all over your fucking hands, dude. Well, I don't know why I did that, but... Alright, so we'll go... Wash it off. I don't know if you guys can see that. That thing looks pretty snazzy. Let's see what happens. Well, so it's got this gloss sheen on it. I don't know if you guys can see it. Um, so. We take it upstairs now and we'll wash it off in my hands. All right, be right back. All right, guys, so uh, looks like we got it done. Turned out pretty damn good. Uh, if I don't say myself, say so myself. Um, yeah, I like it. Even got like the white belly in the middle, you know, where the where the paint didn't actually go on. But I guess that's why you gotta do it. I don't know. What is the best way to do this? Who knows? But at least like all my patterns are all on the same plane, you know? So this one continues on to this sheet, so on and so forth. Now, that's what my intent was. So like this flame, this flame will continue on to this. And uh, it turned out pretty damn sharp, I think, for my first time. But, uh, It'll look good with the GoPro on there, and uh, we'll see what happens. Now I'm going to let it air dry, and we'll let it air dry, and then uh, we'll go ahead and clear coat it. Alright, talk to you in a bit. I say it was up. Alright guys, so, <clears throat> back in the shop, we put it back together. Or it's already been together, but uh, now we're starting to assemble it, and this is what we ended up with. And of course, everybody in their mom is texting me. Yeah, of course. But it turned out pretty damn sweet. Um, I think one of the problems I did is I just didn't go. I went down at like a 25 degree angle, and not a 45 degree angle. But all the plates pieces turned out pretty damn sweet. Um, oops, wrong way. Um, all of our screws are coated just like I wanted. Um, so yeah, and then I think I think it looked pretty damn sweet. Once we get these uh, beautiful Yuma Glods on, once we get the damn Yuma Glods on, um, this thing will look sexy. Um, so there's the Yuma Glods. Now we went with a, of course, a TBS Unified Pro HD. And then we went with the uh, Brain FPV. Um, well, what the hell do you call it? 
uh, Radix, no, Red, yeah, Radix, Radix, or whatever can. And then, of course, we have our beautiful um, Adol RC E40 on there. Um, and where's our, and then our R6R. But, uh, so that's everything that's going into this box, this guy here. Got our Farview antenna. But, uh, yeah, this will look pretty, uh, pretty snazzy once it's all done. Um, probably one of the cleanest builds I've done in a while. Um, got our China Line batteries going on there. And somewhere around here is the GoPro session. Oh, yeah. I'm holding it in my hand. But, uh, yeah, so we've got our wires all ready to go. I am just waiting on some 3D printed parts. But you guys can see the the shine that's coming off it. Um, really turned out nice. Um, truly impressed with it. This is going to be a really nice build uh, once it's done. Um, but like I said, everything turned out good. i got to do some better lighting in here. Yeah, it looked good. I think. Hey, leave your questions or comments or anything like that. I hope this video was informative to you guys. And uh, again, I'm probably uh, Copper Jason here with a freaking camera on my head. But uh, oh, got another project coming up. Get a PV, send me some gimbals. So we are going to hydro dip our Tyrannus. So, and then I'm probably going to end up hydro dipping the, uh, so I'm now stuck on hydro dipping. Now I'm going to also hydro dip my goggles too. So, but, uh, hope this video was informative again and, uh, leave your questions or comments in the bottom and I'll try to get back to them and answer them. But, uh, I don't know if it's the right way or wrong way, but I think it turned out pretty damn sharp. But, uh, thanks guys for watching and, uh, make sure you like and subscribe, share it with your buddies.